Germany 5, Scotland 1. First game of the tournament is done and dusted. Scotland just came for vibes, to be honest. Um, they started the game, they had so much passion. Palekwa Anthem, they're just singing, they're about to cry. The first few tackles, they're really getting into it. Even Porteous was getting into those tackles early. And, or Porteous. And we were like, hey, this boy, they've really come to defend. They've come to play well. And then... On the other side, Tiani also started quite well in terms of defense because they were basically playing with a back five. I was surprised um, with Ta starting alongside uh, Rudiger for Germany. Mittel start was solid. I've not seen him. I've not watched him play before. I heard he plays for Stuttgart. Um, yeah, he was solid. So I saw the game off, like the passes that Germany looked way sharper, to be honest. They just looked like they, were, they, were, they had more intent. They really wanted to actually get into the opposition half and play... That front three, the passing, the chemistry in between them, they just want to play the ball and play with each other. So that combination of Gundogan, um, Kai Havertz, Kai Havertz, Gundogan, Witz, and who's the last person I'm missing? Musiala, of course. Musiala for me was arguably, I would have put him out of the match, but again, Gundogan was inv almost involved in almost every goal, yeah? Like the penalty, he won the penalty. The turn that he had um, that led to the pass that, to Kai and then Kai assisted to Kai assisted Musiala. He was, Gundogan and Musiala were really good in this game, but Musiala's ball carrying really gave Scotland problems. He was just popping up in different positions on the field. They just couldn't stop him. Um, Christie especially was hard to do a lot of defensive work. McTominay is a big threat for Scotland. Like they're not putting him in positions to actually threaten this team. Again, I'm looking at Steve Clark, the Scottish coach. The formation, the style of play, the way he set up this team, they are not set up for success today. Like today, they are not planning on getting anything from this game from the get go. The way they they played, yes, they had the passion, they had, they really wanted to play for their country, but they were packing the bus. This thing of playing with a back five in 2024, it has been proven that it's not working. Like you cannot be sticking to the past. This is clinging on to past glory. I remember how he used to play at West Brom almost 10 years ago. He's still the same way he's playing in this era. There's a reason why the likes of Mourinho are being slowly phased out of like Inter, like the big teams, right? Yes, he has a job now, but for the longest time, he was coaching the big teams, Inter, Chelsea, you know, Real, and then slowly he started going to like Roma and stuff, and now he's at Fanabachi. Because people just refuse to adapt, yeah? People like... um. Um, like Mourinho refused to adapt. So, yeah, man, this this style of play. And again, Scotland has a very, uh, not not the best team, but it's a good team. It's a solid team. These are people who are playing in England. Um, Shankland, who came on, was the top scorer in the Scottish League. Like, they have good players. So, I was quite shocked by just the decision making. Uh, just going over the goals, um, the first goal of the tournament was Florian Witz. Uh, that is Kuria Hernandez's husband, um, <laughs> who got on the score sheet. The pass to Kimik was really nice. And then just coming um, coming down the wing and then crossing straight to Verts. Like, why Scotland were not... You have a back six, but no one is marking the middle. So it's just some things that were just questionable. Just their defensive transition was quite questionable. The pass that was made uh, cross-field was actually from Tony Cruz to Kimik. Um, <laughs> and Kimik is the one who set up Verts. So there was a very clear uh, game plan with the German team. Cruz was really good as well. Just solid, like nothing flashy, just keeping position ticking. If it's open, if it's going to the wings, it's going to the wings. He was taking up a very interesting position at left center back where Jonathan Tao was. For me, Ta, the way he started off even with his first touch, there was just something about him. The way he's going into rushing into tackles, I believe that's that to me would probably be big Germany's biggest weakness. Um even Andrich starting in midfield was a bit of a shock. Um yeah, I thought they would start with someone else in midfield. Um, yeah, anyway, then again, Musiala scored a beautiful goal. He was assisted by Kai Havertz. Just quick fit in the D, um, gets the ball, like sorts his feet out nicely and puts it in the top corner. Um, one thing about Havertz was, yeah, Havertz does, the one thing Havertz does well is that he allows the midfielders, if you have a team that has midfielders that like running past the striker, he allows for those midfielders to run past him because he has good holder play, he can run in, he, like he just knows where to be and when to be. So if if he sees that the, he's coming short or the chances at the back, he'll come short and allow the likes of Verts and Musiala to run behind. 
again we, i said that in the in in the prediction like he's he's going to be the key for this team uh going forward um yeah then we had a big penalty shout when christy and tiani fouled musiala but he wasn't given because the challenge started from outside the d but not too long after uh a cross comes in gudogan header and it goes straight at the goalkeeper angus gun and as the ball comes back out uh potias just cleans out gundogan and then he has the audacity to to fall down and hold his leg and once it went to vr it was a clear penalty and even more clear that it was a red card so yeah i got sent off the kai took the penalty over ilkai again something that just surprised me but i was watching the game here with uh, george mr producer and he was saying yeah maybe gundogan was injured in that particular moment so there was that uh 3-0 half time going into the second half Pascal Gross came on for Andrich like this is the thing with this team is that now um Nagelsmann is like and now I can I can try out things you know I'm 3 nil up I'm playing against 10 men let's try and give people time and they're playing in front of the home crowd first game of the tournament you know just get that confidence up again the goal is just to get a win in this first game but you can get it and score many goals even better you know um yeah then uh, Hendley came in for Scotland they still went back to that back 5 back 6 whatever it was their first touch in the in the, actually in the opposition half in Germany's opposition half came around the 60 something minute like it was actually really they were quite poor to be honest let's just say they were quite poor as an arsenal fan Tiani does not look I, I don't know I don't know I just hope Arteta can do something with him because I I really love Tiani I hope he can succeed at Arsenal somehow but yeah maybe that one is is gone but i don't know today he was not he wasn't great um as one of the three center backs in that back three that turns into a back five stroke six then yeah full crew came on scored almost immediately with an amazing shot he looks very happy like playing up front you know so when he came on he was like i need to do something for my crew in the home crowd so the like amazing amazing fire shot into the top corner Um, at that point Mula also came on for Musiala. Mula is refusing to retire. Mula is just that guy. Um and yeah, Fulcrick scored another goal, but it was they said it was offside. So one thing I saw from that is how quick the ref made the decision. Again, quick shout out to Clément Turpin, the French referee, the guy who looks like Trossard, the guy who never gives yellow cards and he he lets people play. That's what we love about him, you know. This is making was really good but it was also attributed to the automated offside right which is going to be now introduced in the Premier League you can see how quick decisions are being made and that's just what we want as fans you know we don't want to be lingering around still waiting for VR drawing lines and stuff like that and yeah Scotland managed to get a goal amazing header by uh, Rudiger against his own goalkeeper that was that was a really great finish from Rudiger um that goal made it 4-1 in the 87th minute at that point it was 1-1 in the second half i feel like scotland played much better in the second half but at this point they were just desperate uh, it started off as damage control also germany kind of just took their foot off the gas um but emre chan decided to he's going to leave a mark on this game the man who was selected 48 hours before the tournament even started because of tonsillitis to i forget who it was um but yeah came on uh, scored the fifth goal 5-1 to germany this is a good start it's first game of the tournament for the host you always want to get off to a good start so yeah good win germany that's game one. that's day one of euros 2024 tomorrow we have a big one spain versus croatia we're going to be live so make sure you tune in peace